So, long time no see, we are actually doing a top 10 video this time. I'm going over the top 10 decks I expect to see in Stuttgart and see to be meta. And this will be a bit of a different video because it will also take like the uh, new uh, set into uh, account. The uh, terrestrial, no, the um, Pikachu set. The Searching Sparks. So first off, I expect to see Mirada. Uh, on my, my number 10 spot. Um, it has some really strong points. This is an old Miraidon list. I think with the new Pikachu instead of Mewtwo, it has a nice setup. You can use Pikachu to take a hit and still get it out. So it gets a little bit more consistency. It already has an insane consistency if you know how to play it well. It has a really good f setup. So it has some issues with a few decks which is why I put it as slow. Raging Bolt is a tough matchup for it. So it's uh, Iron Thorns and especially stall matchups. It used both Iron Bundle, Radiant Greninja, and Blood Moon. Stall doesn't give it any prices. So if you trap maybe Blood Moon or Iron Bundle or Great Greninja, they have an issue there. So that's why I put it this low on the list. Next up, we have Iron Thorns. And it's very consistent, it's very linear, and it has a, there's a lot of strong EXs in the current meta with abilities. Like if you look at this list here with Miraidon, we both have Miraidon, we have Squawk ability, and we have Mew with Restart, we have uh, Blood Moon with Seasonal Skill, and we have the uh, Pheasant Dibity, which is a must have in almost every single deck. And it's helped with the consistency of a lot of decks if they lose a Pokemon, but Iron Thorns abuse that against them. It and it's very linear. Like there's only one way to play it: put Iron Thorns in and then start slowly chipping away with damage. Then we and it's very consistent. That's why it's this good. The only issue with Iron Thorns is you need to be able to search your deck a lot and have a good control over the opponent's deck. And it doesn't hit that hard, so you need to get it to do damage quick. And there's not any new tools for Iron Thorns in the new set, as far as I am aware. And it has a poor matchup to everything that stalls it out or hits hard before it's able to set up. So yeah. Then we have Gatawar. Gatawar is actually a really nice deck here. Um, I put it quite low because we haven't seen any big results from it, but personally I think it could be a top meta deck. Uh, it has a lot of tools, it has the Drift Loon, it has the Cliff Key, Scream Tail, Fluttermane. It's able to move the damage around with uh, Monkey Dorio, and which is also one of the things I really love about Gatawar. Um, it has a uh, good consistency, um, we have a nice search engine from Curlia, and the fact it takes discarded energy and put it back in play is something I like about it. It might be able to add a Sylveon EX, I'm not sure yet, but might be. And then the fact it's mainly one prize cards, that's really good about it. It has a few downsides. Um, Duskmaw, example. Duskmaw is like the one big bad in the meta, so to say. And Duskmaw is able to really push down the bench. Especially when they play Briar, then they take two on the benches, you're down to two prices, they use Briar and take up the Gatawar and kill it or something like that. That's how I see the Dusk Noir matchup will be an uh, issue for Gatawar. Uh, then we have the Reggie Drago with the Kyrim. Kills Gatawar instantly. And of course, stall matchups. It don't use that much energy. Eight energy is not a lot in a deck. And Snorlax can just block all the way through. They have five bench, bench slots, they are not able to switch. And most of them will cost a little bit extra to attack with. Drift Loon costs two for a decent hit, three if you want to hit hard. So Snorlax is a really good matchup into here. Then we have the uh, Raging Bolt. It's just a bit of Mirai on deck. Let's be honest, it's very consistent, it's very, it's very easy to play, and it just goes through. 
we you set up a raging vault, you get your opponents on the bench, you start getting that most heal dance going, you start as vitality to get your energy back in play. We all know it, we have all seen it a ton of times, and it's strong. Let's be it's strong, that's how it is. The only issue I see with it is it's mainly run by EX attackers. We have Slither Wing, but it's not a strong attacker. And there's a big lack of control. Like, you only have two Pokemon catchers, you have one Prime catcher and one boss. So, you maybe be able to hit one Pokemon catcher and one boss. You get your boss, you get your Prime catcher, but it's not consistent control. Because Pokemon catcher is a coin flip. And Iono is something that can slow you down, but it's not something that gives you any prizes or take your opponent on the back foot unless you take a big knockout. Then at number 6 I have put Charizard. I still think it's a good card, a good deck. And the Charizard card has some really strong points. It has a good control because it uses Pidgeot EX as its main draw engine with Rotom as a backup draw engine and it can abuse the new Dusknaw. The new Dusknaw is definitely the one I'm the m looking forward to the most in this meta. You we use Dusknaw, you have two Dusk Golds, you nice stretch your back and with Dusknaw, use the rare candy. Now you do um, 240 damage with Charizard. Like it's stupidly strong and the Fort Sun as well. The only big issue I see this deck is they use so many one-offs. One Luminion, one Rotom, one Fizz, one Noir, one Clubs, one Night Stretcher, one Counter Catcher, one Lost Vacuum. Like there's a lot of one-offs in this deck. And there's a lot of strong counters in the current meta. So in this general meta it's not as good, but in general I think it's a really good deck. And really nice deck to play with. Number 5, I've put, put up Snorlax Stall. It's something we always see play a tournament. This one is uh, one Nilsons from Lille. And it's a nice list. I like it. Um, personally, I will not play this list if I would play Snorlax Stall. Um, Dianti is not what I would have picked to counter Lugia. But I mean, it makes sense. This list makes sense to play. and has nice consistency, is very strong. General Snorlax Stall struggles into Lugia, so. And the thing that makes Snorlax Stall is so strong is just a lot of tools. It has insane control capabilities, two bosses, four counter catchers, and it's a deck that doesn't take price cards. It has three accompanying flutes in this one. I w would probably have taken two, that's enough. And it's very hard to play into. If you don't know it's a Snorlax stall, you easily lose the first game already at setup. So yeah, the bad point is it takes a lot of skill to play. It struggles with the Lugia matchup, which we have seen a lot of here lately. And then it has a struggle in it struggles into decks with a lot of switch options. That's something like Lost Box, no Ancient Box and Lost Box. Ancient Box has the uh, pitch runs to switch around. Lugia has Jet Energy, and we also see um, Lost Box has between 7 and 8 switches, and some also play Jet Energy, so that's why I see this as a good deck, but it's not the number one deck. Then we have the Lugia. So Lugia is one of the best decks at the current time and place. It has an insane mid game and insane damage output with Chinchino and Weirdia. It's one of the few decks that can one shot Charizard if they get set up. Big issue I see is they need to set up. And it sometimes lack consistency to that setup. If you don't hit at least one Archeops on your, your early turns and is able to get it out with Ultra Ball or discard in some way, or it's very hard to get it going. You need those Archeops to get it going and if you can't get them in the discard pile you have an issue. And then the fact it only uses special energy. So special energy is not a bad thing in particular just because it's special. The thing is we have tools like Giacomo who can discard them 
if we you force them to play all that jet energy, you just put down Giacomo and discard from both Pokemon to the song. And we have Pokemon that can attack without like special energy. We have Pokemon like Iron Hands, if they don't have a legacy on it, it can't attack. Luminion can't attack without legacy and so on. So yeah. I see some issues with the deck, but I clearly get it's a strong archetype and it's something we have to look out for. Now comes my oral mentions. We have Sylvian EX. Sylvian EX is a card I personally think can be insanely good when we have the right list for it. It ha its first attack does 160, so not a lot of damage, but the ability to take 100 less damage is really good. It's make it able to tank two or oh, three hits from Dra Dragapult before going out town. It's able to tank a hit from Giratina Vista if that's the case from uh, Rig Drago. It takes a lot of energy from uh, Raging Bolt to discard, so yeah. And then the second attack is actually why I think Sylveon EX is strong. It has Angelite. And what that does is it's able to shuffle two of your opponent's bench Pokemon back into that deck. If that's two rare rec candy Pokemon, you use Angelite, they have an issue. You Now they are behind on Pokemon, they are behind on most likely also behind on prices if you use Dusk Noir with Sylveon. So I will definitely say Sylveon could be really strong. Then we have the, the Tatsugiri. So we have seen uh, some a few Japanese players play Tatsugiri. And they play with Pidgeot and Hydreigon. And the reason they play Tatsu is because if they set it up in the first turn, get Cinnabar Lure, Lure up, you have a perfect setup bench uh, turn 2 if you get it going and if you get that going and you get the Cinnabar lure up it's very hard to get close to the deck because of cards like High Dragon because of the control from Pidgeot so personally I think it's something we should look out for but I don't think it will be the big one then of course the one I am the most scared to see is Hydreigon EX. Hydreigon is a really strong card. First off, it has Crashing Headbutt, which 200 damage and discard top 3 cards of your opponent's deck is insane. And that's not even the strongest move it has. The strongest move, if you ask me, is Obsidian. This attack does 130 damage to what two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and does 130 to your active like 130 damage to bench Pokemon that means it can take down almost every deck in a few attacks because every two stage evol stage one ev evolutions they are around those 260 Sylveon has 270 as one of the few but usually they are around 260 so it does a shit ton of damage. And that's why I think we have to look out for it. So yeah. Let's get down to number 3. Terrapagos Control. Terrapagos Control is a deck I have tested a little bit with. I actually think it's really good. It has a lot of tools to work around with. And the reason I think it has a lot of tools is because it's able to use a lot of spread damage with Dusk Noir. It has three nice stretchers and it has to pitch up to search your deck. So tool wise, it's a big toolbox. You have so many ways to get around everything. It has insane control with the Pidgeot and the Dusk Noirs, and it has a really nice search engine with Pidgeot. And as well Nocturne. The thing that makes me think it's not gonna be number one is it needs area zero. We have a lot of decks that play around it, but they don't particularly need it. For this deck to do damage, they have to get area zero into play. It has 230 HP, which is good, but it's not enough. And it doesn't do enough damage with Unified Beatdown, unless you have those area zero up and going and you have a full bench. And on that point, it also needs the rare candy. Like, 
if you want to get dust noirs, you need rare candies and as well with fidgets, so it has some points it's lacking and then just as with Lugia, it only uses special energy. Special energy is good, it's fine, it's good for acceleration, especially with double turbo. But you also have the Giacomo, you have the Temple of Sinnoh, you have some tools to neutralize special energy, which is why I will not put this as my top one tank. Just as Lugia, low special energy drags it down. Number two is Dragapult EX. It has so much in it. It has insane sprint damage. It has a strong surge with double pitch at EX with quick searches. It has the Rotom, it has the Fist. Like, you can't stop this deck from searching. And it has so much control with counter catchers, boss orders, and you don't mind getting behind. Actually, you would prefer that as Dragapult bec because it makes you able to spread the damage more. The only bad point I have is some deck, some Dragapults play with Sparkling Crystals, and those who do need to get that Sparkling Crystal going. I have seen some play without it, and I actually prefer those deck lists. But this one is the best performing we have at the moment, and that Sparkling Crystal is both the best and the worst part of, part of the deck, because Lost Vacuum takes it away. And it has a low energy count, which means it can be stalled pretty easily, and then as well it needs to be set up. If you don't get the setup going fast, you have an issue with this deck. So that's why I put it at number two. My number one spot is Riggy Draco V Star. It has a insane main attacker. The Riggy Draco can hit like a truck. It has the Giratina V Star that hits for 280. It has Phantom Dive from the Dragapult to hit from for 260 on the bench. As well as Kyrim that hits your entire bench for 110. And its secondary attacker is Ogapon, which I will say is a really damn good secondary attacker. And it has the insane bench damage as Dragapult and a lot of other decks have, both with Dusknoir, but it doesn't need the Dusknoir to achieve that. And then it has a really good energy usage. A 7 3 line, it only needs one fire energy on each Riggy Drago to hit hard, and it's enough to get Ogapon up and hit hard enough to KO most of. The only issue I see is the Iron Thorns matchup. Because we only have one cancelling cologne, so it's hard to accelerate that matchup. And then it has Snorlax Stall issues. Snorlax Stall can close it down. Cancelling cologne, there's only one, maybe two if they use Legacy Star to bring it back. But that's it. Snorlax Stall easily blocks it. If they use Noctowl or Squawkabilly, Mew, you just drag one of those up and you stall them out. So, it's a strong deck. Don't get me wrong, but it still has issues. So that's why I put Reggie Draco at my number one spot. Because it's the deck I feel the most confident in saying this has the potential to win in almost every single matchup because of all these tools it has. So yeah, there you go. That's my list for what I expect to be strong and perform well in Stuttgart for regionals. The reason I haven't included too many of the uh, new decks from uh, Searching Sparks is because we haven't seen much results from them yet. Maybe I will make an update list after Gdansk, the uh, one in Poland, and uh, compare how they performed there, who won the game, were the uh, regionals, and all that. But so far, this is my predictions for Stuttgart. So I go hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did. Please leave a like, and if you have anything you would have changed in this list, let me know in the comments. So, that's it for me. See you guys next time. Peace out from here.